Hey everybody, welcome back to the ranch. My name is Mark. It's been a long time since I've cooked something on my smoker. And as you can tell, it's winter here in New England right now, so the temperature is a little bit chilly outside. But we're gonna try to fire up the pit and make some St. Louis style ribs. Let's prep these ribs now for the smoker. I've got two racks of St. Louis ribs that I picked up at my local BJ's. I'm also gonna mix it up a little bit this time with the rub and the sauce. My wife recently took a trip to Tennessee and she picked up this Jack Cawthon's hand rub, which I'm gonna use on the ribs. And then for the sauce, this uh, Lynchburg Tennessee whiskey barbecue sauce. Both are from Tennessee, so we'll see how they taste. Today I'm going to use a blend of hickory and apple chunks to smoke these ribs. I've let the rub sit on the ribs for about 20 minutes and as you can tell by the sheen on the ribs, it's starting to draw out the moisture and it has a really nice color to it. One of the things that I do in the winter to keep the pit hot is I wrap this insulating blanket around it and just kind of clip it on. And this keeps the heat in and more importantly, and it's not really a factor today, keeps the wind out because what ends up happening is on a windy day, the vents on the bottom end up taking in a lot of that cold air and it really messes with the overall pit temperature. It goes up and down like crazy. So this sort of acts as a little bit of a windshield and insulates it from not just the cold, but the wind. The ribs have been on for a little over an hour. They're looking pretty good so far. What I like to do now is just kinda spritz them a little bit with some apple juice just to keep them moist. These have been on now for about three hours. I'm gonna take them off, I'm gonna wrap them, put a little bit of apple juice in there, and put them back on for about half an hour. And they're back on. And I'll leave these on for about half an hour. One thing you're gonna find is that everybody cooks their ribs differently. Some people cook them unwrapped for the entire time. Other people you will use a 2 2 one or a 3 2 one method. And what that means is that you cook them unwrapped for two to three hours, then you wrap them for two hours, and then you unwrap them for the last hour. And the thought process there is that during the period that they're wrapped, it will help to tenderize the meat more than if you left them unwrapped the entire time. Now, what I generally do is I will cook them unwrapped for about three hours, and then I only wrap them for half an hour. And I put a little bit of apple juice in there. Sometimes I'll add some brown sugar or some honey to add some additional flavor. But I only wrap them for 30 minutes because I find that anything beyond that, they end up getting a little bit too tender and too mushy for my taste. 
So after they're done being wrapped for that 30 minutes, I leave them uncovered. That's when I'll put some sauce on it and things start to firm up again. And I take them off when they are what I call toothpick tender. And I'll show you what that is when we get closer to it. I just unwrap these, I put them back on, and you can already tell they're starting to tenderize a little bit. You can see they're even beginning to pull off the bone. So I'm gonna leave these here for a little bit, and then I'm gonna start adding some other ingredients. The next thing I'm gonna do is add a little bit of this pineapple habanero rib candy. I use this a lot on my ribs. I do it right before I sauce them, and it adds a little extra sweetness and a little extra heat to it. They have a bunch of different flavors. One of my favorites is mango habanero, but I don't have any of that right now, so this will do just fine. So I've added the rib candy to one rack of ribs, and you can already see the difference in the sheen and color. We'll let this sit for a little while, and then I'll add the barbecue sauce. The next layer of flavor I'm going to add is some of this Tennessee whiskey barbecue sauce. Let this set for a little bit, and then we'll check on the tenderness soon. I think these are ready to come off, but I want to show you the two tests that I do to make sure the ribs are perfect for my liking. And the first thing is I do a little bit of a bend test. And as you can see here, as I start to bend it, you'll notice that it's starting to crack there. That's the first indicator. The second indicator, like I mentioned earlier in the video, is I like to make it toothpick tender. And what that means is when I use just an ordinary toothpick and start to poke at it, it goes through with very little to no resistance. It just slides right through the meat. Big bone there, so that doesn't really help. So these are perfect and they are ready to come off. I was very quickly losing daylight outside, so I just brought these in. I'm gonna let it rest for a little bit, and then I'll slice them. So we just sliced into one of these ribs. It's cut through very easily. It was nice and tender. You can see a little bit of uh, color on the outside. All right, now I'm gonna give it a little bit of a taste. Mm. It's good. It's definitely tender. It's not fall off the bone, but it comes right off the bone. And for me, that's when it's perfectly cooked. I don't like fall off the bone ribs, but I like a rib that when I bite into it, it comes off the bone and it doesn't stick to it. And that's what this rib is doing. Also, the sauce that I used here and the new rub, they both taste great. So I'll tell you what, for winter ribs, this was a winner. Mm -hmm.